Adrian Pierce, and I'm the Chief Data Officer at Credit Suisse. I'd like to spend a few moments walking you through the data intelligence journey that we've been on over the last few years. Within Credit Suisse, we manage our data as an asset. I would actually say that we manage it as one of the most precious assets that we've got. And whilst we're doing this, we actually ask a, few, a series of relatively simple questions. Where's the data located? How can one access the data? Who's using the data? Is it fit for purpose? Is the quality of data appropriate? And if it's materially wrong, what does it do to the organization? Most importantly, who do I contact if there's a problem? Now, these are all relatively simple questions, but if you're in an organization as complicated and as large as Credit Suisse, we have five divisions, we have eight functions that support them. It's important to be having a framework where people can answer these questions much easier. To assist us in this journey, we created what we call our data management framework that I'll show you on the next slide. The data management framework has got five components to it. It deals with security, quality and control, governance, architecture, and usage and analytics. And over the last two to three years, what we've done is we've worked on each of these areas to mature them, and now we're bringing them together under the direction of the overall data management framework. We would describe this as our data intelligence within Credit Suisse. Now, because Credit Suisse is reasonably complicated, we wanted to be able to get people to move in the same direction. And to do that, we came up with the following three simple strategic objectives. We wanted to improve the quality of data. We wanted to simplify our data sourcing, and we wanted to industrialize our data management. And to do that, what we did is we selected three tools that we'd like to operate on across the whole of Credit Suisse. The next slide shows these tools. Firstly, um, we focused heavily on data quality issue management. We wanted to know where they were issues. We wanted to categorize them consistently. We wanted to understand who was fixing them. And we wanted to understand where they were fixing them and when they would get done. And so we spent a lot of time focusing on cataloging our issues and making sure that we got some very clear metrics that we demonstrated to all of our consumers as well as a number of observers internally through our EXP and through our board of directors, but also to some of our regulators. We also spent a lot of time on data quality assessment. Now, if you're a data owner within Credit Suisse, you are expected to attest to the quality of your data. And by that, we don't expect you just to tell us it's okay. We expect you to run a series of inline tests to prove that what's in the fields is supposed to be in the fields, that they're populated, that they're timely, and that they're accurate. Now, we took these two components and we put them right into the middle of our Calibra environment. And we did this because we want the organization to look in one place. We didn't want them looking at three tools. We wanted them to look for data quality, data quality assessment, within the central tool. Why did we pick Calibra? We picked Calibra, and you'll probably heard this already from me, that we wanted to assign individual and organizational ownership. We wanted to do that because we wanted to hold the data owners accountable for the quality of their data. We were also impressed with Calibra because we were able to link data quality issues. We were able to make it transparent to the consumers, and we were able to show everybody what quality of data they were getting at a point in time. The workflow was also very important to us, as well as automatic notification functionality. When something goes wrong, we went to tell somebody. When something needs to be fixed, we'd like to alert somebody to that. And we can do all of that through Calibra. We were also very, very keen to have a controlled mechanism for distributing our information. So to be able to leverage an API framework that links in closely to Calibra was very important for us. And then finally, the complexity of Credit Suisse means we needed a flexible meta model. And that meta model was very important for us because each of the divisions and functions have their own challenges, have their own way of looking at data, but we needed to bring it together in the organization. And if you now look in Calibra and Credit Suisse, what you see is you see clear data ownership, you see the data sources, you see a data quality assessment, and you see a common data intelligence experience across the whole of Credit Suisse. Now, it didn't just come to pass that it happened like that. It was a journey over a few years. And the next slide, I want to talk a little bit about where did we come from. So I took on the role as CEO back in 2017. 
we talked a little bit about core governance. We had a, a, a rudimentary data glossary, um, but we really hadn't got to the five components of our data um, management framework. When 2018 came along, we, we started to look at data quality issue management, and we built that very rich set of metrics that we uh, published to all consumers, as, as well as internal observers and external observers. We also worked very closely with our chief information security officers to make sure that we were protecting our data. Data loss protection is very, very important for Credit Suisse. And we started to drive some certification across the quality of the information that we've got mainly at that time driven by regulations such as BCBS 239, DFS 504, but also we were starting to come on that journey ourselves and understand what we wanted to be able to get from a data owner in terms of their attestation. In 2019, we brought all the pieces of the DMF together. And we brought them together in an integrated management framework. We were able to show data quality assessments and we were able to bring them together with a data catalog. The data catalog for us was super important because we wanted to be able to bring together logical elements that people understood to physical elements that come on feeds. We work in a bank, everything comes on a feed. We needed to understand that and make sure that we could join the logical and the physical together. And we do that within the Calibra catalog. As we go forward in 2020 onwards, we're going to start doing a lot more around data insight in terms of creating value for our business. But we're also going to look at the data access framework. And on the next slide, I just want to walk you through what is the data access framework within Credit Suisse. On this slide, you can see a few key components. The discovery process, the shopping experience that we have is very important. We'd like a user to be able to understand where is something in the glossary? Who owns that data? What's the quality and the trust in that data? And how is that data connected to other pieces of data? That we describe as the discovery framework within Calibra, that's our shopping cart. Once you've got to that discovery, you need some source assurance. You need to know the source that you're about to use is a golden source. You'd like to know it's been used by other people. Um, and you'd like to be able to orchestrate a number of sources together, which we do within the Calibra environment. Now we have two particular flows. We have what we call an operational use case. This is where I'd like to take some trade information and I'd like to use it downstream in vivo online as part of my processing environment. At this point, I would use our Apogee framework that's been delivered in, in collaboration with Calibra. And I'd like to be able to provide you access to an API to get that information that I can control. I can check that as a consumer, you're allowed to see that information. And then I can provision you that information to you in a controlled manner internally. That's our operational flow. If you look at our analytical flow, this is where you're not actually using the data, you're just doing some analysis on the data to find out some information. In this particular use case, I don't want to or have to give you the information. I provide you a provision partition onto the data. I don't send you the data. You can't adjust the data, nor can you give the data to anybody. And that's very important for our control framework. So we'll give you a partition and that partition will be there for as long as you've asked for it, providing you've got the access to ask for it. And as soon as you've finished with it, we take that access away and we've maintained the security of that data within our environment. So those are the two different flows that we're having our shopping cart experience. Um, this is now available within Calibra and this is what we're working on as we go forward into 2020 plus. I'd like to just pull things together, if I can, on the next slide in terms of what do we think and how would we describe effective data management within Credit Suisse? We see it as easy access and controlled access to high quality data. We'd like to do this because we'd like to democratize the data that we have so the whole organization can, can take advantage of the data assets that we have. Again, looking at the first strategic objective, improving data quality, this means that data issues are identified. They're resolved in the right place. If there is a data issue and you're a consumer, you can understand that there's a data issue at present and when is it going to get resolved by? You get full transparency across the data quality network and you also get to understand how that data is being resolved and how you can use it. In the second objective, simplifying data sourcing, 
This is about using the catalog. It's about providing us a central catalog of the data available for consum consumption across Credit Suisse. There'll be some choices in there. Where there are choices, you'd like to make sure that you're using the information that most people are using. And providing this transparency on the data landscape allows us to drive simplification. So not only get, do you get to understand what you're using, but you also get to understand who else in the organization is using the same information. And then finally, number three, industrializing our data management. This is all about having a common business glossary and a set of standard definitions. It's about identifying the data owners at every level and driving accountability, making sure they publish their quality, making sure they own up to what they're fixing and when they're going to fix it and they're fixing it in the right place. And that I would describe as how we are trying to democratize our data across the organization. Um, one last point I'd like to do, a personal thanks to a few members of the Calibra team. Um, this has been a journey that we've been on now for nearly three years. And throughout those three years, we've had a lot of close contact with Phil Carty and Jim Cushman. They've operated as true partners with us across the two year period. We've asked for many things. We've flexed the provision in Calibra. We've changed the things that we've done in Credit Suisse. But I think we've come out of it with a much better solution um, than we would have if we'd not been operating in such close partnership. So I'd like to say a huge thanks to those two key individuals who've been leaders for us in our interaction with Calibra. I hope the presentation has been interesting uh, and I hope we've managed to chart some of the process that we've gone through on our journey towards data intelligence and credit suites. Thank you very much.